address this inaugural session of India Russia Business Dialogue 2023. This is an outcome of a partnership between FICI and the Ministry of External Affairs with the Business Council for Cooperation with India. So I commend the efforts of all those who have made this event possible. Friends, let me begin really by appreciating the fact that my distinguished counterpart, Mr. Uh, Dennis Mantaro, Deputy Prime Minister, is here today leading a large Russian delegation. I will be meeting him tomorrow in my capacity as co-chair of the India-Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Scientific, Technical and Cultural Cooperation. And uh, in fact, in the last year, uh, the two of us, uh, when I visited Moscow in November 2022 and I interacted with him virtually uh, just a month ago. Uh, we have really prepared the ground for tomorrow's meeting and as he himself stated, we will be looking at many policy and uh, process issues uh, designed to uh, expand our cooperation. Uh, and I would suggest that perhaps at the conclusion of your meeting today, uh, if there are uh, some key concerns which the business has expressed and I've heard uh, for example, Ms. Nashtina mentioned some of them, other colleagues did as well. Uh, I think it would be very useful for us uh, to consider what the business feels are problems uh, for business. Uh, and we will certainly factor that in uh, tomorrow in our conclusions. Now, uh, friends, I uh, begin by emphasizing that business actually has a key role uh, in driving the growth and sustainability of any relationship and that is precisely the reason why we are meeting here today. Now the enabler of course is our time-tested and long-standing friendship and we actually uh, capture it in the term our special and privileged strategic partnership between our two countries. In the last decade uh, we have actually seen enhanced levels of cooperation in many areas and these include the fields of energy, science and technology, inter-region cooperation uh, and they supplement what were the traditional areas of defense, of nuclear and of space. Now recently uh, we have also been discussing how to expand and diversify our bilateral trade and economic cooperation. And I have myself, uh, for almost a decade now, been personally involved uh, in these efforts. And I believe that uh, today uh, these are uh, yielding uh, results. Now, uh, we have crossed the bilateral trade target of US dollar 30 billion uh, before the year 2025, which was the target year given to us by our leaderships. Uh, and uh, in fact, for the period April 2022, February 2023, uh, I understand that the trade is actually about $45 billion uh, and the expectation is that this will continue to grow. At the same time, I think uh, I'm not the first speaker, Mr. Kanoria actually began by mentioning this, that there is uh, also understandable concern about the uh, trade imbalance uh, which these new volumes have created. And we need to work together uh, with our Russian friends on a very urgent basis of how to address that imbalance. And addressing that imbalance really means addressing the impediments, uh, whether they are market access uh, impediments, whether they are non-tariff barriers, whether they are uh, related to payments or to logistics. And I really cannot emphasize this enough. I think we should also, uh, in a business gathering, be honest uh, about the short and medium term challenges that we face. Uh, and, uh, you know, there could be, uh, quite frankly, there could be over compliance, there could be over anxiety, or even over caution uh, on our side. And equally, on the Russian side, uh, there could be an inadequate appreciation of the concerns and the risks that Indian businesses face. So I would say uh, what 
uh, really the future of our economic cooperation requires uh, is the willingness, the ability uh, to, to, uh, to really look at it from the point of view of the other party and then come up with uh, solutions uh, which will overcome uh, the obstacles. Now the obstacle, the possibilities I think uh, are both in, you know, uh, I would say uh, gaps which may have emerged in recent uh, months, but also new areas and I, I completely agree that I think today uh, payments, logistics, certifications, these are really the, the uh, key areas and, uh, uh, and, and I'm convinced that it's possible to, to really uh, find uh, solutions because if you look even in the last year uh, and this is something which the Deputy Prime Minister himself is personally involved, we found ways, for example, of looking at the fertilizer trade uh, in, a, in a much more, uh, in a much more mutually uh, acceptable way. Uh, so I think if we can look at an area like fertilizer, surely you know the same uh, spirit of cooperation and mutuality, we can we can uh, look at other areas and look to find solutions. Now uh, the. Uh, in terms of how do we diversify and expand the basket of goods, uh, I think clearly uh, we need to, to motivate business on both sides. So I'm glad to have a motivational speaker also. Uh, and uh, apart from uh, traditional exports of pharmaceuticals and organic chemicals, uh, clearly there are uh, possibilities in auto and spare parts and electronic goods and components in medical devices, which there was a speaker. Uh, on high efficiency solar PV modules, textile apparel, white clothes, leather, ceramics, but also I would emphasize food and uh, agricultural products because uh, this is one area where SPS restrictions uh, have been really going on. Frankly, I personally remember now for uh, almost uh, the last uh, nine years. Now, uh, where India is concerned, I would like our Russian friends to appreciate that uh, uh, you can see uh, there are big changes which are going on. Uh, there is a Make in India initiative uh, which is aimed at promoting greater manufacturing capacities uh, and we are determined to make India a major global manufacturing hub. Uh, we are in, there will be uh, greater production based in India uh, and not just for our own growth uh, but also because we believe that in times of global instability, uh, that the world economy uh, requires a more resilient uh, and reliable set of supply chains. Uh, in fact, one of the big lessons of COVID uh, is how do we de-risk the global economy by having many more production options. Uh, and it is clearly our strategy today to position ourselves uh, as a major manufacturer, as a bigger trader, as a stronger service provider uh, and I think it should be of interest uh, definitely uh, to our Russian friends. Uh, I also want to specially emphasize the opportunities for uh, joint projects uh, in the Make in India, Make for the World uh, format uh, and Russia is known for its technology strengths uh, and uh, in India today is uh, focusing on production scaling and product distribution. So even our traditional areas in fact could benefit from this but clearly there are third country market implications here which uh, our companies uh, should be looking at. Uh, let me uh, also uh, talk a little bit about the enabling environment. Uh, we have been having discussions for a uh, a free trade agreement between India and the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, so the COVID interrupted those discussions, so I would very much hope uh, that our colleagues will pick up on this. We will certainly encourage them from the foreign ministry side. Uh, because we do believe that that will make a real difference to our trade relationship. Uh, we also uh, are in advanced negotiation on a new bilateral investment treaty, uh, and we appreciate that this is perhaps necessary. Uh, certainly useful uh, to provide sufficient confidence to investors.
Now, there has been some talk, uh, rightly in my opinion, about the importance of connectivity initiatives, the International North-South Transport Corridor, as well as the Eastern Maritime Corridor, which is the chennai Vladivostok uh, Corridor. Uh, and these are being uh, given due consideration. I think there have been a number of uh, events in the last few years, including the blockage of the Swiss Canal, uh, which underlined why it's necessary for us to have many more connectivity options. Not all obstacles are necessarily logistical, uh, but uh, I think everybody would agree that uh, to the extent we can, we can address this. And certainly the Eastern Maritime Corridor, I think, fits in with our our goal are uh, what is called Actis policy uh, as well as uh, the Russian uh, policy of having the Far East uh, come in as an additional driver uh, of the economy. So I think there's a synergy there which, which uh, is waiting to be tapped. Uh, there's also uh, obviously discussions on the payments issue, uh, the, the expansion of the correspondent relationship network. Uh, under the uh, scheme of the International Trade Settlement in Indian Rupees to special rupee Bostro account system. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I think the, the payments issue clearly needs to be worked through uh, between, between our systems, which is something we will also be discussing uh, at the meeting uh, tomorrow. Uh, now, uh, in the last uh, nine years, uh, the Modi government, uh, again, I say this particularly for the benefit of our Russian colleagues. Uh, the, the Modi government has undertaken uh, a number of important uh, uh, economic reforms uh, and these are actually of interest if you are looking and evaluating opportunities in India because they do include incentivizing production uh, in, in uh, really doubling down on infrastructure and logistics, in rationalizing taxation, uh, in moving the economy from the more informal to the organized sector and in, uh, I would say, cleaning up and, uh, and uh, 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 resourcing the financial system. Now, we would like our, our friends in Russia to appreciate this transformation which is underway uh, because uh, its compounding strength uh, will work, to, will enable uh, both of us to strengthen each other's strategic autonomy uh, if we can translate this into economic cooperation. Uh, our two countries historically have also had a strong people-to-people -people connection, uh, but I must point out that we actually get less than 1% of Russia's outbound tourism. Uh, so uh, I, you know, when we are talking today of uh, exploring new areas and new opportunities, I would also flag that. Uh, whether more direct flights uh, to more destinations uh, will uh, provide a possibility uh, for, for uh, greater uh, business when it comes to tourism. Finally, uh, as a foreign minister, uh, let me try to place the economic cooperation in a strategic context. Our partnership today is a subject of attention and comment. Not because it has changed, but because it has not. Indeed, it has been among the steadiest of the major relationships of the world in the contemporary era. But that by itself is not enough. We share a commitment to a multipolar world, and that also means a multipolar Asia. Russia is today looking much more towards Asia, a reassessment from its traditional focus. For India, this could mean a broadening out of our engagement that was overly reliant on the triad of military, nuclear and supply space cooperation. For Russia, also, it presents a broader set of options. As Russia looks eastwards, its resources and technology complementarity can be a powerful contribution to India's growth. And this is a growth of a 3.5 trillion economy that is expected to grow at more than 7% for at least a decade or more. 
And I would say that our ties, our cooperation, are best advanced through more intensive bilateral engagement, such as the one we are having today. I have already spoken of the implications of new connectivity and the role of industry collaboration. So I conclude by saying that what we make of the current situation depends very much on us, which is why today's gathering is particularly important. Thank you, Madam.